Okay, so we're hearing a lot about the sequestration cuts. We're, we're sensing that something is happening in Washington. Uh, what? We're not quite sure, but uh, we've got to nail it down here. We're about to do that today. It's Malcolm Out Loud. Welcome to the show here. Have joined with me one of my favorite guys to have on the show because we always get to a point of truth, and uh, it's Harry Dent. Uh, as you know, Harry Dent's his latest book, The Great Crash Ahead. Uh, and uh, strategies for a world turned upside down. We've talked about it before again on the show. Harry, good to see you, buddy. Yeah, nice to be back. All right, man. I always love having you on because we always do well, and I'm always able to get some truth out of you, better than having the politicians. <laughs> so Harry, again, is a New York Times bestselling author. You, 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 you've, we've talked about his books before. You have a sense of what's going on here. Again, he's the man who's predicted Japan's lost decade, the recession of 1992, the biggest bull market to run in U.S. history, and most recently, the 2008 credit crisis and stock stock market crash, which we still haven't recovered from, I believe, although he, he'll tell you more about that. He now predicts even a greater crisis, and I, I'm starting to see you out there, Harry, talking about that. And we talked about this last year. We talked about it before the election. In fact, I've been kind of, uh, haven't seen you in a little while, since the election, actually. So I've been, really, though, I've been anxious to get you back to say, okay, what's really happened here? Because we did a lot of this reality check, and you and I did prior to the election. So let's start there a moment. We know at this moment of time, folks, let, let's set the table here quickly. We have se sequestration cuts coming down the pike here uh, as, as this show is being taped and broadcasted right now today. We're about a week and a half out from that, okay? Uh, the, this was what I call, what Malcolm calls a game of chicken, Harry. That I, uh, This is what I believe. These are my words, not yours, but it sounds like you might support that. And I was curious to see whether the president or Congress, who would have to do the cluck cluck or whatever sound that chicken makes, peep peep, uh, sound first. Uh, who do you think will make the sound first? You know, I, I think it'll be just like last time. I mean, at, at the end, both sides will have to get in. They're drawing the line very strong. I mean, you, you'd think the Republicans had won the election. So they're, they're saying, look, well, we don't care. We care about this debt thing. It's an important issue to us, and we've got to make serious cuts, and we can't just keep raising taxes. So, you know, the, the Democrats are the opposite. So, so I think this is, you know, it really hits around May 1st. I think it's going to go down to the wire again. And I think stock, you know, stocks are just going up like, like, like there's no problems. As soon as this starts to hit in, stocks will probably start to pull back for a while and get real because they are not going to come to an easy agreement on this. There's well, no there's, a, there's a false sense of security out there right now with the stock market rising, I believe. Yeah. I think a lot of business people somehow... No bad news from Europe? Okay, well, just wait around. There'll be bad news from Europe sooner or later. But So people have this false sense of security somehow, yeah. Harry. You're, you're seeing that too, right? Well, you know, to me, the, the market, ever, ever since March of 2009 with the massive stimulus, the stimulus pushes money in the markets. The markets want to go up, and they go up unless there's bad news, unless something bad in Europe or, or, or a fiscal cliff, the markets just trend up. They, they don't need any reason. Right now they're going up. They, there's been plenty of bad news this week. They just, oh, just keep edging up, up, up. That's what the, a market on crack does. It, it just wants more crack. It wants more stimulus. And it'll keep going up as long as there's not bad news. Uh, it doesn't need good news. It just doesn't need. It, it doesn't want to have bad. Well, somebody's news. making money with all that crack, oh, obviously. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I well, mean, banks. Yeah, banks are no longer making money lending money since it's hard and, and interest rates are low. They're making money investing at high leverage. Every investment bank and, and even companies like AIG had have divisions that do nothing but invest on leverage. So yeah, they they love this market. Not only do the governments bail them out, but they basically inject all this money that they can turn around and invest, and they know they got. The government covering their back because they won't let the market go down too much. They won't let the economy go down too much. Every time we go down a dollar, they put in a dollar. They grab it out of somewhere just, oh, right. here's a dollar. Right. Okay, so Harry, uh, let's bring it right forward here now to what we're currently deal dealing with, with the sequestration cuts. All right, you and I have talked last year about... Um, our core problem being that deficit, the core problem of the fact that at some point we have to say uncle, at some point we have to give. There is a point of denial in here going on with our two political parties and the, the, the frustration and the structure of it. And I have a lot to say about that, which I, I, we nearly get sidetracked on that. But even the Republicans, the games they're playing, I believe, back and forth, with all due respect, to Harry, uh, because obviously there's major political points right now. And like you say, in many ways they're playing like they won the election. Well, but then again, this is what they had to convince themselves to do since the election because they really thought Romney was going to take this thing, as you know. Yeah. And obviously when he didn't, that kind of set a whole 
other aspect of things in motion, including Obamacare, which companies are scaling back now and taxes and all that because they don't want to get these full-time employees, can't afford it. Well, but, yeah, they may end up with less people. Covered exactly. In. And joblessness, unemployment, none of that's going to be fixed, which gets back to your point of a bigger crash ahead. All these are pieces of this thing. But I want to move on in a moment to Simpson and Bowles. And I want to talk about fix the debt. But before I turn to that, brother, I want to discuss with you um, so March 1st, uh, the, the uh, sequestration cuts. We're talking, I believe it's $1.2 trillion, is it, Harry? I Generally. Believe, roughly. Yeah. Okay, so $1.2 trillion. So does, at this point, do you think they come together and somehow avoid the, the sequester, uh, sequestration cuts, or do you think it happens at this point of no, time? No, I think it happens, and then they fix, and then they come to some agreement, may, maybe sometime in May. It, right. It's going to go down to the wire, just right. like it has every time. Everything they will have to give in the end. Both sides will have to give in the end, but both sides are going to press as long and hard as All they right. can. That's been the pattern. All right, the pro- here's what's happened. Now, back to the game of chicken, folks, I told you about, okay? All right. So what I got upset initially with the president for is that he used our defense as a in a monopoly game basically uh with again but but then again i say that harry and i want to get your opinion on this because uh, i seen a stat just recently which kind of blew my mind I, i don't know and you verify if you know these numbers to be true but the United States spends $760 billion on defense, $760 billion, folks, while the top 14 countries, including Russia and China, combined around the planet, spend $540 billion. Are those accurate to you? Yeah, we have 11 aircraft carriers. The next largest countries have one each. Right, right. That's it. China has one. Yeah. France, what do you think one. of that? Well, I, we've carried this burden too long. You know, we could afford it in the past, and, and now we're aging. Everybody's aging. American citizens are going to have to choose more and more between health care, retirement, and defense. And they're going to say no to defense. And it's unfortunate because who's going to kind of hold the world together? Do you think we're, in, do you think we're vulnerable because of that, Harry? Yeah, no, we are. I mean, uh, it, it keeps our budget deficits higher than they would be otherwise. Um, and, and we are, I mean, we're, we're protecting Germany, Japan, countries who are, are as wealthy as we are almost and should be Always have paying been. for their own defense. Always have been. And, sharing and, and, the burden. And I never got that game. I never understood that game. Uh, you know, I, it's, it's like the debt thing. It, something gets rolling and it keeps its momentum until something stops it. Right. And, and so d- we've had this defense role. And now, basically, our debt crisis, which is going, getting out of control, and, and the aging of us and Europe and other wealthy countries are all going to force us where we cannot spend this much money on defense. The question on defense is, can we get by with a little bit less? We know there's a lot of waste in government all the way across the board. About every agency has waste. We know this. this. That's a fact, folks. That's a fact. Whether you like government or not, that is a fact. And we've, we've blown the whistle on plenty of these agencies over the years with you all. But here we are, uh, Harry. The question I wonder is, can we get by with a little bit less in that defense if we, obviously, we've got to cut the waste and trim things, the fat and so on and so forth? Or are we putting our country at risk? I guess that's the million dollar question. We really don't know that. Well, now, you are to some degree, but I, I don't think, I think that story has been oversold. Are we spending too much then yeah, in defense? We, we spent too much. I, in other words, we have to have okay. a defensive strategy, not an offense. Okay. We can't go out and try to save countries. Oh, I've said that right so along. Police the world. Nation building. Nation building. It. It's Nation too building. hard. And there's too many. It's yeah, absolutely. Endless. Absolutely. It doesn't stop at Afghanistan or Iraq. There's no. A, every country in Africa needs it. Oh, it's I mean, crazy. I've I, I talked about this a year or two ago. And, and the terrorists just absolutely. moved to new countries. North Africa's just starting. You haven't yeah. seen nothing yet. What's going to, where do you think the terrorists are going? I said this a year or two ago. They're not going to go to the Middle East. Get out of here. They're going to Africa. They're going to South America. That's where they'll be in Antarctica next. They'll be in Canada. That's they where, always go somewhere else. It's where they're going, man. It's hard to stop them very clearly. So, all right. So you think defense. All right, so I hear you there with the defense thing. But back to the game of chicken. So you had the defense being budget that the president said, OK, I know this is important to the Republicans. So let me put that in there and the sequestration and hold that. Then, I'm, then the Republicans wanted all those social programs, entitlement things. So they put some of that in there. So now at this point, some people are going to be shocked come, you know, after March 1st when some of these budgets are cut out automatically. The check doesn't come in anymore. What do you think happens? Does the reality set in at that point, Harry? I think it does. That's about 0.6% of GDP, the cuts they're making. Now, that's small compared to the whole budget. That's right. But when we're growing at 1.5% right now, the last two quarters, and it may come in even weaker in the first quarter, uh, taking 0.6% government spending out is going to hurt. Okay. They're saying, oh, we raised taxes on only the top 1%. It started the top 2%. Well, that top 1% controls 20% of the income and probably 15 to 18% of the spending. They cut back just 5%. The economy, that's going to be another half percent. See, but they don't see it that way. They don't see it. They, it. they never 
never have seen it that way. They just want to keep those people bleeding as much as they can, I think, so that they get they, this whole mentality of give, give, give. I think what's really harmed our country, Harry, in the past few years, in, my, in, in, in retrospect for me, is the class warfare that has been put into motion in this country between the haves and the have-nots. I think there's been a lot of damage there psychologically, and there's a lot of hatred across the board is what I'm sensing, okay? Huge. Those that, that work happened hard. in the Roaring Twenties in the Great Depression. Is that right? Yeah. And the, the inequality built up in the yeah. Roaring Twenties in yeah. the Great Depression. All politicians did was deride business people and entrepreneurs. The very people they praised. See, in the that's Roaring what's 20 happening. Public. That's exactly what's happening, and that's what we're dealing and these with. These are the right golden goose. Yes, I don't. I don't get the. I, I. I just. I can't put that in the context to understand why they don't get that and why we have that happen. All right. Someone came out here uh, just the other day here and talked about that. They, we're going to feel the hits even with like okay. Go Going through the airport, air traffic controllers, uh, the emergency response. These, these are the whistles that uh, Obama's talking about. Now, I don't know how true any of this is. Do you sense that those things, even air traffic controller going through the airport, could take another hour or two, emergency responses? He's trying to play on those things. Are those real? Those are cuts in there? Oh, it's real to some degree. But Jack Welch said the other, the other day on TV, he said, look, any business manager could cut 3 per- They're asking for 3% cuts. Anybody could cut that out of their budgets. Right. So it's, it's, it shouldn't threaten the system. Well, I think... I think uh, Simpson and Bowles again. Let's let's change uh, cycles a little bit. And as we move toward this, um, uh, as you know, they uh, the president put them in charge of the commission to uh, to look at all this some time ago. Their proposal was knocked down, even though a lot of people said there was some common sense in there yeah. the first time around. And now they're coming back again. So the one point two, they're saying, okay, wait a minute, we should have a two point four yeah, uh, trillion. 2. Is that what you understand? Yes. Okay. So twice as much. In, in the next decade, next 10 years, they're saying, okay? And now, but, now I don't know if you know this, Harry, but the House GOP leaders, I've just discovered, are now detailing the size of their deficit reduction package, which we don't know all the details about yet, by the way, but they're going to propose, they say, that, it, that they will, ba- I don't get this, but maybe you can shed some light on this, they're going to balance the budget within 10 years, they, they, and which would put it in the $4 trillion range. Do you buy any okay. of that? Here's where they're all... Full of bull. There's this assumption, business leaders, politicians, economists, even a lot of people on the street, that if we can just get over this, this problem we had, this debt crisis, that we'll get the economy, will get back to normal. That, you can't balance the budget, even have a chance, unless the economy grows at 3 to 4% a year. We're not getting that. And I was like, it's not going to happen. Demographics is what I study. Cradle to grave. We know everything people do. People, the biggest bulk of our workforce are aging baby boomers, and aging people spend less every year after age. So they're basing it on a model that doesn't exist, and Harry. That That's what you're saying. We're going to have to make bigger cuts right. than anybody, even the Republicans are saying. Entitlements are so unaffordable uh, compared exactly. to reality, it's not exactly. even a possibility. But nobody's taking into account. Everybody's taking the past and saying, oh, we're going to go back to grow 3 4%. We're going to be lucky to have GDP. At these levels, 10 years from now, right? That we're, we're going to have almost uh, – J- J- Japan's had zero GDP growth for the last decade right. and a half. Right. Zero inflation, a coma economy. Our debt-to-GDP ratio right now is just above 70, I believe, Harry. Help me out here. Is it okay. above- Government, it's a little over 100. Okay. You add in private, it's, it's about 400 percent, four times, and that's not considering unfunded entitlements, Social Security, Medicare, right. Medicaid, which is four times our kind of – got about eight times – GDP, if you add all our debt, long-term, short-term. Okay. But it, it's insanity. It's right. four times worse than in the 1920s before the Great Depression. But we're talking, but if we play with Obama's playbook right now, and what I'm seeing, he leaves office in four years and continues the plus trillion deficit every year that he's doing, brother, uh, which would... In good years, we have a trillion deficit. In bad years, we have a trillion and a half. Exactly. Plus. That's the future. And it only gets worse with so rising what happens, health care and social security. What happens? What, so, what it only wonder- gets worse, and with aging demographics, it gets worse. So nobody's in reality. There's this illusion, again, that if we just get over this problem, we can get back to normal Harry, demographics and a high debt load. Say, there's no way to get back to normal. How does he, and you've got to deal with private debt, not just public debt. Right, which you say. three I know, times the I public know. debt. Harry, how, what I can't understand or fathom, I, I, I just don't know. How does he leave office uh, four years from now? How, I, I, okay, here's what I envision. I have this vision in my mind, okay? You've seen it on television before, whatever. He, he gets ready to leave. The new administration comes in. He's been now the second incumbent president, eight years he's done, unless he's successful in changing the Constitution and tries to buy another term or two. And knowing him, I wouldn't put it Not past much. him. Anyways, so I see him waving. He does the wave now. Thank you for eight years of screwing up your country. Here we are, folks.
folks. Thank you very much. <laughs> what does he do for a swan song at that point uh, one day? As he's waving, and if everything's held true to the crash here, if everything's held true to the, to the debt, to the GDP we're talking about, if everything holds true to his deficit spent in the next four years, what is left with our country in four years from now? Well, and what's his legacy like? Well, I don't well, get well, it. Well, unfortunately, what everybody's doing, and, and you can understand this, central bankers, politicians in any country, presidents, prime ministers, push this thing down the road so somebody, eventually, the demographics and debt are going to weigh on you. You are going to have a crash. You're, the chickens are going to come home to roost. But if you can pass it, keep kicking it to the next administration that's exactly or it. the next term, then you don't, you're not the one because everybody knows what happened in the Great Depression. It was just a huge debt deleveraging. Fin financial diarrhea is what I call it. Just this huge washout of debt. We've got way more debt now. Right. This is going to hit sooner or later. And if you don't deal with it, you end up like Japan in a coma economy, not for a decade, but for decades. See, you, you just hit that very eloquently. You just hit it head on as far as I can see. And I talk to you folks all the time about this, this kicking down the can notion that happens here, okay? I want you to understand, and this is something I'm very passionate about, Harry. I talk about this on national radio every day, my friend. And, and, but I also try to put a, another sound bite on it so people understand what I'm saying. In other words, they take it seriously, Harry, because they're not really seeing and sensing and understanding the seriousness of this conversation. So here we go. At some point, I think people outside the door here, they really believe somehow that government, Uncle Sam, if you will, is part of the family, and he's going to fix things somehow. They really believe, Harry, that somehow we really can print more money. They really believe yeah. that they're going to make it magic better. magic wand. They're going to put a Band-Aid on money. it. Exactly. Yeah. So what I don't get is that I, can't, I, can't, I continue to try to convince people, and you just hit it, like I said, perfectly for me. When at some point somebody has got to pay a price for this, if it isn't us and you in this generation, guess what? It's your kids. Yep. It's your grandkids. Oh, it, it'll be before that. The hell is it with people that they don't understand the simple philosophy of that? Somebody's got to pay a pay price here, man. It's a huge one. It's a yeah. huge one. But they don't get and it. Two point four trillion. Even Bowles Simpson doesn't even come close. No. To deal with it. No, well, again, and the GOP says they want to... Ryan's cut plan wouldn't even come close. Four trillion. Four trillion, yeah. All right, so let's talk about this. I, I just, I don't, I, I just can't understand how the president... It takes a crisis. The I only way we'll it. ever deal with this is if we actually have a crisis and people realize there is no easy way out, there is no magic wand. And you people, half the people listen, they're stupid. They really, I mean, a lot of people, they're just stupid. They run around not knowing that the sky really is falling, man. Well, people are running <laughs> I mean, in, the, in, in stocks like, hey... They're going to go up and everything's fine. I think it's going to be the biggest. I think, it's, I, you know, I said uh, after 9-11, I'm going to bring you back maybe four or five years ago. I said, and you'd look at me and laugh. You do what you, but I said then, the bigger problem we're going to have ahead is not terrorism, although it is a problem. It's not any of that, and I do believe it is a problem. The biggest problem we're going to have ahead is our own spending. That's our own yeah. deficit. It's, it's our debt. Now, since 93, in the boom. Debt grew at two point, private debt grew 2.7 times faster than GDP, and government debt grew about 2.5 times faster. This is great. You can't do that. Can't do it. For decade after can't decade after decade. Cannot do it. Every debt crisis, every debt bubble in history is ultimately burst. What's different today is governments around the world, central bankers are saying, we will not let the bubble burst so they keep the insanity going. Exactly. And what we've seen that in Europe, you're Which means you only have it. a worse no, no. crisis later. I know. Well, that's it. Nobody wants to take the pain on. I just can't believe the ignorance of some of these people who really are are okay, Harry. They really are okay with going to bed at night, falling to sleep, knowing full well the kids in the other room or the grandkids across the city are going to suffer and pay a bill here. It's not a laugh and matter. It's not a joke anymore. And nobody seems to get the, 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 the calling sound, sign yeah. on that. Yeah, yeah. Who, who's paying the price in Southern Europe? Young people, 50% unemployment. Who's paying in Japan? Young people don't have the jobs their parents had. Their, child, their parents kept their benefits and told the kids, you don't get the lifetime employment, you don't get full-time work, you don't get any benefits. The kids are paying the price. Right. So how long are they going to do that? I, I, I tell old people, sinful. you better buy a gun because young people can start shooting a older people. Amen. It's sinful. Well, you, 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 you're speaking the truth, Harry. What you're talking about here is you're talking about the riots in the streets. We're seeing them in Europe. We yeah. see them all the time. It's young people. Yes. 
you're seeing it now, and it's, it, it plays right into the mass killings, the mentality of society. You talk about all these things, and you keep throwing all this pressure out there with people. It, it's pretty wild. The president says these cuts are not smart. They are not fair. Uh, they will hurt our economy. <laughs> they will add hundreds of thousands of Americans to the unemployment ro- rolls. Uh, this is not an abstraction. People will lose their jobs. The unemployment rate might tick up again. Now, this is what the president says, Harry, and he puts that out there again. Uh, because, again, what I've said on radio just this morning, in fact, is, you know, it's the, what I think, Harry, it's the whole giveth and taketh away. Once you giveth, it's very, very difficult, Harry. If I give you, uh, you know. You can't take it back? It's hard for me to take Even it back, Even if it was Harry. unrealistic? Yeah. Couldn't afford if the first time, Right. If every time you came in and I gave you, you know, uh, uh, you know $10,000, she said, well, Malcolm, I've been here five, six times. You gave me 10000 every time. What the hell happened today? Well, I just don't have it. The budget, because well, I don't like it. Well, I know you don't like it, Harry, but you don't, we don't have it anymore. Why? Well, isn't that what well, we're the, doing? The demographics today, and this was not planned. Average person works 43 years and then is on the dole, retires for 23, because they're going to live to 86 if they make it to retire. You can't work two years for every one year goofing off playing shuffleboard. Now, we were promised that. It was unrealistic. Nobody saw a, a smaller generation coming that couldn't pay for it. And, but now people just don't want to take it back. We're going to have to start retiring at age 75 instead of 65. Hey, we're going to be 75. We're going to be 80. That would 80. Save You're the right. System right there. It's going to be no retiring. People would pay in longer and they would take benefits less long. Right. And Right. Fix the system, healthcare, and social. so you're, you're so you think a seventy-five year 75. age retirement? If we'd have just adjusted Social Security from the beginning right. for our higher life expectancies, right. that's what we'd be doing. But even that won't be a permanent fix, Harry, if we don't get the spending in order still, right. because it's a cancer, is what we're talking about here, buddy. You right. still have budget deficits. You still got that, problems. But it would at least fix Social Security, right? Exactly. And things like that. All right. So the spending cuts. Uh, he the, again, the president has an emphasis on the spend the cuts would burden middle class families and so on and so forth. Uh, you know, screw the system. Screw people are making money. Screw people who are successful. So on and so forth. It's the small guy. I get the whole small guy. The problem is people need to reread our Constitution and understand that equality of opportunity has always been there. Equality of the end result is not the answer. That has never been the answer to America's uh, program. Harry, yeah? Yeah. That's right. You give people opportunity, but you don't dictate outcome. And that's what they're doing. They're you, di- let the, you let the invisible hand do that. And with government manipulating the economy with all this stimulus, they've basically taken the markets out of the free markets. There are no more free markets, and people are making poor decisions. Okay, so, so Bowles and Simpson, FixTheDebt.org, interesting organizations come off the ground over the past year. Uh, they've got, uh, they've got uh, programs in, uh, don't quote me, but it's like 25, 30 states, might be over 30 now. Uh, they've been setting up. Uh, full logistics offices, what have you. I mean, these people are, uh, they've got a hell of an organization. I spoke to uh, some, uh, some of their corporate folks over the past month or two. I uh, plan to do some interviewing up in D.C. with them, Harry. Um, but, uh, you know, while they may not have the total answer, at least Bowles and Simpson are trying to do something about they're something. Doing, they're, they're heading in the right direction, and they're being realistic about it. So everybody talk to else me about is in, that. What you said earlier, everybody's in denial. Exactly. Again, These guys that, are that, not. That, that we just get over this curve, we're going to be America again and grow again. We can never grow at the rate we did from 83 to 2007. And we got a deal. To sit there and say it's going to hurt the middle class family, of course austerity hurts. If you run up debt too fast, to, to act like there's not going to be some pain and consequence, and it shouldn't be, and nobody should bear the burden except for 1% is insanity. You're going to like true. what you see, I, and I want to introduce you more and talk more about you. Uh, I want you to be able to meet these folks that fix the debt, some of these folks up there. I think it's certainly a conversation. I, I'd like to see if you even speak at one of their gigs or do something because, quite frankly, um, this is, from what I've seen, from, I've looked at all of their lineup, the boards, the different things. It's very, very bi- bipartisan, very much nonpartisan, yeah. in fact. Right. Um, and uh, you'll be and, and they've come up with the best plan yeah, so far. Everybody you, agrees yes, with that. Yes, you'd be surprised. But some it's of politically the, unacceptable. Yeah, exactly. Because nobody wants any pain. Well, Because there shouldn't be any pain. That's what they're saying. And yeah. I, I really love to see when I see... Uh, we can't again, hurt our economy. Right, that's exactly it. Uh, and for those who don't know, again, uh, you, you may remember the name that Erxine Bowles was uh, Bill Clinton's former chief of staff, as you know, uh, Harry, and Alan Simpson, of course, Republican uh, senator from Wyoming. And... and um, uh, great guys. So I love the uh, camaraderie they bring to the conversation on the table. I, 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 uh, they're very um, serious and sincere, mm-hmm. but they have a little bit of levity within, I think, you know, uh, some of the times when they're interviewing. And I, I just think they're fascinating to watch and hand. All right, so they're proposing 2.4 train. Doesn't solve the problem, but heads somewhere right down that road. Off. I seen a speech the other day where I think it was um, 
uh, Bowles, I wasn't positive, I don't think it was Simpson, but they went off and said this is completely irresponsible, this uh, sequestration cuts, because instead of going in and nitpicking like a surgeon, they're just yeah. throwing it all against oh, yeah. the wall. Obviously, what do you think about be- that? No, that's better, but I almost like the sequestration because it just forces us that's to That's what cut. I said, too. Yeah. I mean, I used to say, yeah. when I'd go into businesses, turnarounds, back in the 80s, I did a lot of that, I would just go in and cut budgets 10% because I knew you could do that. Yeah, right. Uh, yeah. Well, we're Force at the point. discipline. We're at the point, like you said, with the cancer kind of thing that, you know, if you need some chemotherapy real quick, brother, uh, you better get in and get the chemo and get a flash of it real fast. That's what you're talking about here, man. We need to have some chemo here, a shock radiation well, uh, or my something. Thing, that people look at the Great Depression that you got to avoid. It. We had three years of a very difficult economy, but we washed out most of the debt in the economy and came roaring out of that and became the leader in the world. We had a kind of a, a debt deleveraging. Governments are just saying we can't let the banks go down. We can't let debt fail. The best thing to help the everyday person and the everyday small business would be to take massive amounts of mortgage debt that has no relationship to home prices anymore off their backs by writing it down. Yeah. We have $42 trillion in private debt that could be written down to $20 trillion by our calculation. $22 trillion, that's more than the government could ever cut. Private debt is the biggest problem. Well, you've said that right along. Are people understanding what you're talking no. about? Well, they do if I give a presentation, but nobody in Washington understands it. <laughs> Everybody focuses on the government debt, and it is bad. But governments, it's very hard to cut government spending in a, in a downturn. Private debt, the whole point of downturns is to force businesses back into reality, get more efficient, and get rid of a lot of but debt. But you've said forever. that. Right, but they're not doing that. But they're you not said doing right it along, at all. They need to get rid of their debt. And so a lot of these companies, I think you even supported a lot of them going into bankruptcy. Yes. Yeah. That's what yeah. happened to the Great Depression. Right, right. Weaker companies taken over by right. stronger companies, right. banks failing, loans failing. Well, What's when those a loans fail, they disappear. It, and it's a rebirth. And, and guess what? Yeah, right. that's, that's right. where the top 1% get hurt because they own most of the investments. But that would be the best thing for the everyday person, yeah. and yet the government's preventing that very Okay. Thing. All right, so let's wrap up here in the next minute, and then I want to I want to tell you what we're going to do just ahead. So, so hang with me here a moment here with Harry. Um, so, Harry, again, so we, you believe, as I do, that the sequestration cuts are essential. Yes, yes. Yeah, I, they're, we, they're not enough, but, but yeah, right. something needs to But, I mean, to something's got to be done. So we both say that let them happen. They're going to okay. happen. There's going to be a little pain to come with it. But the pr- predicament we put ourselves in, pain is part of the process here. We're already in a much of a very dire Thomas strait. Friedman said it better than anybody. If we don't have That's a difficult right. decade, we're going to have a bad century. We have to have some pain after a debt bubble. There's no two ways there around you go. it. There you go. Well said. Well said. And that's exactly it. So I think if you're listening to what Harry's saying, I think it's time for all of us to get real and understand what we're really talking about here. Uh, now, what I want to do ahead, I'm, I'm doing a, a, a very fast, like I said, you can see why I love to have Harry on, because he's one of the few who tell the truth, actually, and get to the point, which, uh, you know, my mantra of being out loud, folks, it's what I like. So we'd like to bring to you. But I'm going to ask Harry. He's going to come back with me here in another piece. And I want to talk to him. And I'm going to help you here just ahead. So don't, don't, don't jump off the cliff here. Uh, but we're going to talk about what's on the horizon of potential positive economic news, what he thinks where you can prosper ahead this next decade. I want to challenge him in just a little bit here and talk about, OK, Harry, how, how do we get through this thing? I know he's got some ideas. We haven't talked about it, but we'll talk about it with you in just a moment here. Be back with you here. It's Malcolm Out Loud. Uh, remember, get involved. Get loud. Oh,